everyone, and welcome to Star Trek Wars, your official bootleg Strange New Worlds podcast. My name is Jeremy, and tonight we are putting this week's Strange New Worlds on trial to determine if it's good or not, and we may now begin the proceedings. Joining me tonight, a prosecutor that looks happy, but I'm terrible at reading human body language. It's Jordan. Hey, Jordan. I object. Oh, Jordan, your objection is overruled. Dang it. I'd like to see where she's going with this. I'll allow it, but watch yourself, counselor. <laughs> You're on thin ice. And by that, counselor, I'm talking about my co-life and co-host partner, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, guys. The episode we're reviewing tonight will be rated on a scale from 1 to 10 by us, the co-hosts, and you guys in the Star Trek Wars Council I left a rating on our Facebook page. If you wish to join the council and have your vote counted for next week's episode, head over to that page. You can find us by searching for Star Trek Wars. The council should pop up right at the top. There you can rate episodes yourself and can also leave a comment that will be potentially read on air. It's a great community. We're all on there, very active, and love talking Trek with you. Now, before we get started, Corrections Department, Jordan, uh, this week's episode title is, in fact, not Latin for Ed Asner Loves Asparagus. I'm shocked. All right, now with that being said so let's get down to the business let's get down to the business <laughs> star trek strange new world season two episode two at astra per aspera written by dana horgan directed by valerie weiss commander una chen riley faces court martial imprisonment and dishonorable discharge from starfleet now before we break down our pros and cons Let's give our brief initial reactions to tonight's episode and find out whether we would hit it. Hit it. Or if we didn't like this episode, we'd... I quit. To hell with you. Hit it or quit it. Chelsea, what do you think? Hit it. Hit it. 100%. 100% hit it. Yes. So good. Wow. 100% hit it. That's like ants and mount levels of hit it. I mean, yeah, I'd hit that too. (laughs) Jordan. Legally, I don't know if I can um, say that I'm going to hit it here, uh, but I certainly wouldn't quit it. <laughs> Thank you. Jordan always bringing the, the legal legalese into Star Trek Wars. I'd hit it also. I'd hit it like Spock wanted to hit that Vulcan jerk at, <laughs> at the dinner table. All right, let's jump into our pros. Chelsea, why don't you lead us off this week? What are your pros? Uh I really liked everything about this. Um, I think we all know by now that I'm not very good at breaking things down or reviewing them, Um, but I liked it a lot. Okay. Uh, I thought the scene with Spock and the other Vulcan having a, I guess, obvious disagreement was pretty great. (laughs) Um, I also love that Mbenga is able to, like, read that. Yeah. That kind of harkens back to, like, the time he's been, he spent on Vulcan, which is a nice call out. Yeah, I think that Nurse Chapel needs to, I don't know, take a couple lessons from him. Because isn't she, like, talking about going to, like, some institute on mm-hmm. Vulcan? Wasn't that brought up? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, other than that, I I mean, it's kind of classic Trek with, like, the whole somebody being on trial thing. But I really liked that it wasn't the captain that was at the center of all of this. Like, he didn't defend Una. He wasn't some, like... I mean, he was integral in the fact that, like, he hired the civil rights attorney. Yeah. But I like that he was kind of forced to take, like, a back seat and watch it with the rest of the crew. And I don't know. It's just refreshing. And maybe, I don't know. Like, because with Burnham, right, and Discovery, everything pivots around her. She has to do everything. She has she to would save. have been on trial. She would have defended herself. And she would have won. And she would have been the judge. <laughs> and every other case, even close, would have been dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. So it was refreshing to like see an actual like attorney, not just like, well, you're yeah. the captain, so you're going to. And like he even kind of fought with her on that. And I liked that he was kind of just told, like, no, you're going to sit this one out. Like, yeah. If because you know what's best, sit it out. He knows Trek like we do. So I know Jordan, I'm sure, like myself, we are waiting for this is going to be the week where Pike. Takes it to Starfleet, gives a big Pike speech, and even Pike thought that was going to happen. So, that, yeah, that was a nice change of pace. And like you said, he still got his Pike moments. They were just earlier. Yeah. 
I uh, really loved the uh, defense attorney. What was her name? She was Mira. Uh, Mira? Nira. Nira. Mm-hmm. She was such a, I don't know, kind of, she was a force. Yes. Um, I liked kind of seeing the relationship with her and Una unfold, a little bit of backstory there. Um, also just seeing a little bit of Una's like childhood and the way she was brought up. Um, I, I just really liked all of it. I mean, obviously it's pretty topical, uh, as far as like the discrimination and the undertones of like race. And oh, so you're allowed to break the rules if you're, what's his name? April. Uh, April. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. It, leave it to Star Trek to always somehow remain relevant and topical despite what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought it was, Perfect. I, I loved everything about it. I mean, like I said, it was nice to see Una kind of up front. Yeah. Even if they aired a little bit of her dirty, like, laundry. Because I think Barbara Whipple mentioned that we don't really get much from her or about her. Right. So this was much needed. Awesome. Glad you loved it. Yep. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, Jordan, will work for you? Speaking of laundry, uh, the fashion was really good this week. Oh. I mean... Yeah, in the spirit of Jocelyn, uh, a lot of different outfits. You get to go to the lawyer planet. I'm assuming that everyone's a lawyer there. I guess it's where the Illyrians live. But um, I like Pike's stubbornness when he goes there and he's got that mask on and he's running along oxygen. He's like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. His thing's beeping. <laughs> and it's just That was pretty great. Uh, I liked his willingness to kind of fight for his first officer. I really liked Ortega's dubbing Spock's conversation with uh, Pasolk. I love Spock's outburst. <laughs> and I also enjoyed Mbenga having insight into the subtleties of Vulcan body language. And we've been getting a lot more subtle like backstory on him as far as knowing other races, how they work, his time spent on Vulcan, um, his time during the Klingon War. So he's definitely rounding into form a lot more this season. I thought, in the same vein of the fashion, that the dress uniforms look awesome Mm -hmm. and that's not always the case in uh, star trek they're very hit or miss with dress uniforms Uh, number one got some screen time this episode probably more so than almost all of last season combined i thought yeah so it was really good to actually see her and hear from her and, and get some backstory so i don't know if they were holding back because they knew this episode was coming and because they knew they were gonna have to go um through kind of her journey in Starfleet and once it was, she came out as an Illyrian in like the fourth or fifth episode last season, maybe there wasn't as much as they thought they could do with her until they get to this point. So I'm not sure what led to that, but hopefully this opens things up and we get to see more of her and Pike together because they seem to have a really strong relationship that we haven't really gotten to see too much of since almost the pilot. So uh, a law doesn't make something just. I thought that was a very good um, line. And this is just episode very much in the spirit of Star Trek and the original series and just what Star Trek does. I also thought that Rebecca Romaine gave a really good performance, probably her number one performance so far, mm-hmm. uh, not that she's had a whole lot of time. But, you know, really solid episode, very Star Trek feeling episode. And I just love the, the feel of the show. I definitely, not a not a perfect episode for me just because it's the second episode um, and I feel like we're just kind of sitting still in a courtroom and given how the pilot went with not having a lot of pike, um, there's definitely a few things. I, I think this would have played better toward the middle of the season. Um, neutral zone wise, I'm not a huge fan of Pike's girlfriend. Mm. I don't know the actress. She's, I guess I mean, she's okay, but I'm just not sure that she's a necessary character in the show so far. I, I felt they could have and should have made more compelling argument against genetic modifications seeing as how it started a war that nearly destroyed earth um it's obviously touched on in deep space nine um also with dr Bashir. so this kind of felt like it had to be it's kind of been done before a little bit and they do mention to their credit the eugenics wars towards the end of this episode and the admiral's given this speech about you know how we should do this at a case-by-case basis, and those those laws are there for a reason because it almost you know, ended humanity. But at the same time, you can't just hold everyone to that same standard. Not everyone who's been modified is going to be Khan, Nunyan, Singh. So 
thought there was a decent balance here. It makes some sense to have a lawyer um, character represent Una, but this episode to me, I thought she did a great job, but it loses a little something, especially given the pilot episode we just talked about, by sidelining its main cast and Pike in particular for a second episode. He does you know, a little bit here, but the rest of the cast is literally watching this episode on a screen like the rest of us for 80% of it. So it's kind of like the menagerie, but even less of the cast involved. I did really like to see, or I would like to see more of the ship. Like I was kind of reminded when we saw the transporter room, it's like, man, we haven't seen much of engineering or the transporter room or a lot of the other ship other than the comets room and the bridge here and there. Um, so I'd like to just explore the enterprise more and get to see more of like, we see Pike's quarters a little bit in the first season too, but I've kind of been missing that. It is also a very long episode. It's almost an hour long and it was like 57 minutes. So Maybe it would have benefited from being slightly shorter, but I mean, overall, a really solid episode, really good episode for Una and her character. And I think I just wish that the seasons were longer because we're yeah. 11 episodes or 12 episodes in now to the show. And we're already, you know, in the second second season with only what seven or eight episodes left. So it just I just think I, I wish there was more. Um, but when you only have 10 episodes to play with, it just, I want more of the cast interacting and the crew. Um, but really good episode. Uh, I don't have many cons, but, uh, what did you think, Jeremy? I agree with you guys. Really good episode. Yeah. Planet, uh, of Illyrian lawyers, uh, a lawyer, a Illyrians. Uh, can we make that work? Uh, I, <laughs> I guess we can't. I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. Sustained. <laughs> Oh, you're a very nice judge to me. Thank you. Yeah, I love the uh, TOS look of this trial episode. The dress uniforms with the special like symbols and the way like that's all very menagerie and the the sets, the gongs, characters staring at the TV while action unfolds. Like this is all very TOS, and I I like that. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to butcher her name, but uh, you tied Badaki as Nira. I wrote the same thing. I used the same words you did, Chelsea. I, th- I thought, man, she is a force, an incredible performance, and a wonderful character. She just crushed it. Really good trial episode of Trek, and Trek has had some really good trial episodes. I love the resolution and the revelation that as soon as Nira discovered Una turned herself in, Everything she did after that was to get number one to say all the right things to request asylum. I thought that was really smart, really good stuff. And uh, yeah, great writing this week. That also ties in with the struggle that Laon goes through, blaming herself and trying to free Una at any cost, which Uhura defiantly stands against, saving Laon in the process. So great Laon stuff, great Uhura stuff. Really enjoyed that. The allegories this week were wonderful and numerous. Uh, through the Larian's struggle, we hear about prejudice, racism, body shaming, trans rights, segregation, segregation, and having to find doctors who will secretly help an emergency, like we're seeing happen right now in certain states where abortion is now illegal. But not a bad episode to play during Pride Month. And I, I loved all that. I love Spock's embarrassing emotional eruption at dinner. Thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Sorry you had to see that. The uh, questioning of Robert April that was maybe my favorite part of the episode until the end. Intense and messy. I love the gray areas this week's episode show that even good people they're not perfect. Robert April is from what we've seen and heard a wonderful captain, admiral, and a human being, but him failing, uh, falling back in the well. It's the rules, so excuse comes back to bite him in the ass, rightfully so. Nira gets under his skin by bringing up the Prime Directive and the many times he broke it, like every captain ever has. It's like the deeply religious folks that will say gay is a sin, but then turn and ignore the parts where women can't speak in church or men can't trim their beards. Like You, just, you can't just pick and choose what laws are okay to break. <laughs> so yeah, this is all great, and... Is Trek woke? Yeah, bitch. <laughs> it's like data. It never slept. Neutral zone wise. At first, I 
too was a bit sad and that pike was once again sidelined i thought this was going to be his big captain makes amazing impassional speech to save the day episode i mean it was said as much back in season one when he told una he looked forward to that fight but the more i think about it the better i am with this decision the weight of the the weight the words hold about discrimination and hatred resonates so much more coming from a person that has also experienced it. And he still got his badass moments in the cold open. He got to do his captain thing by winning his case to convince Nira. So, yeah, I mean, this is dangerously becoming Cisco, my favorite captain territory, where it's like, ah, looks like this week we're getting Cisco in the cold open. <laughs> and then we're not seeing him again. But there's 26 episodes a season on Deep Space Nine. So you're like, well, Cisco's going to get his. Like, we're already 20% done with season two. And we've seen Pike about as much as we've seen Carol Kane. So, oh, there was no Carol Kane this week. No, no, she had about three, three less lines than, than Pike this week. All right. That's what I thought. Another great episode. That's what we thought. When we come back, we will dig into some of the things maybe didn't work. I really need to do better at placing where my stuff is. Mm -hmm. It's just gone. Oh, there it is at the bottom. Star Trek Wars is a podcast that has reviewed every single episode of Star Trek. We covered the original series through Enterprise in our first seven seasons, right here on this feed. Season 8 is dedicated to the Trek films, and Season 9 is where you're at now, where we cover all things modern Trek. You can find every one of those right here on the Star Trek Wars feed, plus bonus content. With over 330 episodes of Star Trek content, it's never been a better time to... <clears throat> on top of that we also have a patreon channel that covers a wide variety of content both trek related and otherwise for just a few bucks a month you'll get access to all that content as well so check us out over at patreon.com slash star trek wars now let's get in to con Chelsea, you want to lead us off with uh, whatever didn't work for you this week? Yeah, I don't really have much. Um, I don't love Pike's girlfriend. Um, I haven't loved her. Neither does he. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> she just... I don't know. I don't get anything from that character or from the actress. Like, It's just very awkward. Like, I feel like everybody's uh, very talented. Mm -hmm. And then it's... Her? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I get nothing from anything that, I, I don't know. Um, She's a real Henry Janeway. <laughs> wow. Now you're definitely on thin ice, sir. <laughs> oh, no. You, you said Henry Janeway, and it set off our Alexa. <laughs> I'm not the Wait, only what? one that's Does pissed. Alexa answer to Henry Janeway? <laughs> yeah, when you badmouth him. <laughs> Uh, um yeah that's really kind of my only con though yeah. i but i don't know i just i haven't liked her since was it like the first episode mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. I, she just feels like a really bad actor i don't know and i i don't know also maybe it's because she arrested number one but that's pretty much it for me all right thank you chelsea uh jordan you got any cons uh not Nothing, nothing too crazy. A little stretching here. Uh, I'd say Data's Day and the Drumhead are so good that it makes some other courtroom drama episodes, you know, it's hard to live up to those episodes mm -hmm. for sure. So this isn't quite up there with those two, but right, kind of right below them. Star Trek's also done some not so good courtroom drama episodes as well, but. Um, I can't think of any. I, <laughs> I will <laughs> I remind you, sir, you're under oath. Uh, <laughs> There's a little, the just, 
this is more neutral zone, probably a little too much focus on the guest character. Like I like the lawyer character, but again, it's just like probably 35 to 40 minutes of this episode is her and she's great, but I don't think we're going to see her again anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So it just feels like a little bit of wasted development on characters that we could have. But to Chelsea's point, Star Trek would normally just have the captain be the lawyer. And I don't think that would have played as well. So I guess that's more neutral zone. And then, uh, it's a really good Star Trek episode, but it's not an episode I'm itching to rewatch. So, which, you know, nothing wrong with that, but there are certain episodes that you see, like from episode, from season one, that I want to rewatch again. This one, I would wait probably a while before I rewatched it. But aside from that, that's all I've got. Yeah, fair. Um, I, yeah, I have very little, too. If anything, I guess I'll talk about the, the production. And look, Jack. This is a great looking show, but sometimes I just think less is more. I think when the show starts playing the Trek themes three times an episode and pushing in on people's faces, all dramatic like, it could just take away from the moment a bit. Picard's speeches in Measure of a Man and Drumhead were perfect, and neither one of them needed sweeping camera shots or Star Trek music playing over it. It just they relied on the material and the performances alone. And I feel like they had both the material and performances in this week's episode. The writing along with the wonderful performances uh, by died, uh, Badaki and Rebecca Romain were more than enough to carry the last few moments. I just wish they had the guts to just let that play out. But it's a minor complaint. Just the biggest one I had. It still worked. Uh, moments hit me good. But honestly, I kind of hope that moments would hit me a little harder than they did at some points. Great episode, though. That's what we thought about it. Let's hear what you guys at home had to say about it. Picking up communication, sir. Was probably- Starting off with Christopher. Here's the deal. We're two episodes into the second season, and I'm almost at the point where Strange New Worlds has dislodged Deep Space Nine as my favorite series. After 12 brilliant episodes, the thing is, this show, and this episode particularly, made me feel. Yes, I felt angry about Una having to fight draconian rules. And moved by the defense lawyer's passion. The admiration and testimony from her crew. These are all things that I felt. What I also have felt as a result of this particular show, Strange New Worlds, is a pure and profound disappointment and sadness that I am here dealing with the current state of this world, born 250 years too early to potentially be a part of something as meaningful and wonderful as this portrayal of the Federation. Trek has always been progressive. Trek has always been woke and fans should wear that like a badge of honor. But the Strange New World series has just hit me different than previous iterations. Fabulous storytelling, amazing cast. Long may this show and the quality it brings continue. Lastly, as a former member of the UK's Royal Air Force, I related deeply to the episode name as our motto is Per Ardra Ad Astra, which means through adversity to the stars. And Una's journey to acceptance has been mirrored in many parts of my life and the lives of those I served with. Nothing more to say. Ten Gilbert and Sullivan renditions out of ten. Will Flores says, This is great Trek. A courtroom drama, yet with humor thrown in throughout to lighten the mood. I was dying when Ortegas was narrating Spock and the Bad Merle. Ten Starfleet bullet points. And Lainey says, You can't beat a legal episode of Trek. And perfect for Pride Month, too. Mike Schmidt says, It was good. It had a couple of powerful scenes and some funny scenes, but it felt like a middle-of-the-story episode. They had to follow up on Una's arrest and find a way to get her back on the bridge for the rest of the season. My wife thought it was boring. I wouldn't go that far, but in future rewatches, I could see skipping it. Alexandra Leeser says, I freaking cried, though. Honestly, Strange New Worlds feels so much like watching original Trek reruns on TV. A lot of the newer stuff I watched, I didn't really get into because it just didn't feel the same. But this feels so Trek. 
Barbara Whipple says there was a lot of good, and I especially like Dr. Mbenga, Spock, and La'an giving testimony. I like that the writers remember the doctor served on Vulcan for a while, but I thought it dragged sometimes and there was too much talking. I did not think it was as exciting and fun as last week. And finally from Keith Danforth, in terms of courtroom trek, it's a really good episode that dives into very meaty subjects regarding how the utopian and benevolent federation isn't always in line with its purported ideals. Unfortunately, this being a prequel series, Trek fans understand that for everything put on show in this trial, it ultimately goes nowhere. Khan still happens. Dr. Bashir still happens. The synth ban still happens. The Federation never seems to learn from the mistakes of the past. So understandably, it becomes an episode making metaphor for the viewer to suggest this is what will happen if you don't fix this now. Which, when done correctly, makes for the best Trek And they did it well here. Eight objections and ten fruits of the poisonous tree. Thank you, everybody, for writing in. Now it's time to hear from someone no one wants to hear from, the gatekeeper of forever. It's that part of the podcast where we take a nostalgic trip through time and visit him. Oh, great gatekeeper. (laughs) As we all know, since before our sun burned hot in space and before our race was born, you've awaited a question that question being gatekeeper of forever what's your thoughts on this week's strange new worlds i find this episode guilty of being boring at least i have the decency of not being a two-parter now star trek has a long history of courtroom drum episodes the menagerie measure of a man the drum head then there's this one i don't even know how to say it because the title isn't even in english so they granted Una asylum. The judges should also be granted asylum. In a sane asylum, you can't let a shape-shifting augment run around wreaking havoc on the world. Mutants need to be put down. Oh wait, I'm thinking of the X-Men franchise. Uh, I've gotta go, my replicated repairman's here. Oh man, it's replicated another hot banana? What's wrong with this thing? <laughs> He's having a rough couple weeks. Uh... Yeah, seeing Rebecca Romain on that stand yeah, definitely triggered his X Men <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> sure. Let's go I ahead. She'll give anyone PTSD. <laughs> Let's go ahead and review this sucker. Chelsea, what do you give it? I am going to give it a nine. A nine from Chelsea. Very good. Jordan. I'm going to give it an eight. Eight legal modifications. Wonderful. I'm going to give it an eight as well. Eight. Asai yums because this cast is still gorgeous. <laughs> Asai yum yums. <laughs> yum yums. Uh, Star Trek Wars Council give it an average score of an 8.93. Wow. All right. Next time on Jordan. Do you have a next time on? I do. Uh, Timothy Oliphant guest stars as a new member of the crew. Unfortunately, on his first away mission, he steps in a flower bed and is sentenced to death. Fortunately for him, his phaser works and he blasts his way out in the episode Justified. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, we cannot put Timothy Olyphant in the same room of, with Anson Mount. I don't think. I know. I don't no. think. can't handle it. No. No. Uh, Next time on, in a Pike-centric episode, the crew learn all about the captain's backstory and family in a riveting episode so important, Anson Mount is included in it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let me table up the scores. Eight plus eight plus nine... Plus 8.93 divided by 4. <laughs> 8.4. You're very close. You just have to add one more digit. Uh-huh. 8.425. That's two digits, Jordan. Ah, dang it. <laughs> Objection. What? <laughs> So how did Strange New Worlds do this week using the combined average score of ourselves and you guys who voted at home? This week has an average score of an 8 
point four eight. <laughs> it's free to go. <laughs> Uh, Star Trek Wars is available on Apple Podcasts, <laughs> iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and anywhere else fine podcasts are heard. If you want to support us in a non-financial way, the absolute best thing you could do is take a minute to leave an iTunes Apple Podcast review. That might not seem like much, but it is so good for well, our more. rhythms. Recent reviews are what other... Trek minded people like you. That's where you that's how they find us. That's what they like. They like it. <laughs> it's, it's so hard to mess up. You would think it's so hard to mess up when I'm looking oh at God. words to read. And stuff. Yeah, like oh your seven hundredth take too. <laughs> one day I'm gonna get this right. I'm gonna get Star Trek Wars right one day. Leave a five-star review, please, even if you don't mean it. We'll read it on air. You can also find us on Twitter at the Star Trek Wars. And if you want a shirt, hoodie, or mug, you can have, head over to StarTrekWars.RedBubble.com or follow the link attached to this episode. Jordan, always a pleasure. Where can I find you? Uh, they can find me on the Facebook page, and they can find me in bed, because I've really been taking it, much like Una, on the chin this week. So, <laughs> Chelsea? Always a pleasure. Uh, Thanks for doing this with me. <laughs> Where can they find you? Uh, yeah, I'm on the council page mm. from time to time. As for me? Well, when I'm not talking Trek, you can find myself and my son Connor discussing all the James Bond films over at the Bonding Together podcast, now available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We're about halfway through the 25 films. That is it for us this week, but Star Trek Wars will return next week to discuss the third episode of Strange New Worlds titled Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Which, I'm glad I... It, okay, so it says Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tony. It should, it should be called Tomorrow and Sun Morrow and Sun Morrow. Mm. Yeah, that's better than Tony, which it just slipped that in at the last second. Damn it, Tony. Which is, of course, Latin for to the stars through difficulties. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> this court <laughs> is out of order. <laughs> Dismissed. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Star Trek Wars.